Welcome, welcome everyone. This is CNR Art. This is my art channel. My name is Kat. I'm very happy to have you guys here with me this evening. Hello. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Still feeling that jet lag. <laughs> but I'm glad you guys are all here tonight. It should be a great time. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Normally Wednesdays I do a draw along, but I decided that I still need some time to recover from my recent trips. Because I, I sat down and I thought about it and realized that over the past three months, I am have only spent one month at my house. And just that realization has made me even more tired. Probably shouldn't have thought about it, but I did. And there we are. So I was just like, you know what? I just need some time to just paint and enjoy and enjoy your guys' company because I really love to stream. So, yeah. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I'm like, I'm already looking towards the weekend going, jeez, this week's almost done. And it's also really hard because like, we're almost done with July. I'm like, where does summer go? I was talking to my, I went to the dentist yesterday and my dental hygienist was just like, yeah, my son's going back to school in two weeks. And I'm like, two weeks? Two weeks, we're going back to school. We're starting a fall semester in college. There's so many things and I'm just like, oh my gosh, wow. Time flies when you're having fun. So, which is good thing. It is a really good thing. So, but yeah, how's everyone doing this evening? I hope that you guys are having a good part of your week. Um, I'm hoping that your week is being pleasant and sunny. Ours is definitely sunny, definitely a little toasty. We're a little warm here for the Midwest, but we're doing great. We're gonna survive somehow. We, we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah, Indiana was hit with what they call an excessive heat warning. Um, and what does that mean? It means that we are hitting the upper 90s, like mid 90s, which is very unusual for this part of the world. So when I say that we will hit the 90s, some of you are probably giggling inside, which is just fine. I completely understand because some parts of the world hang out in the hundreds this time of the year. But um, for here, our usual high is maybe in the upper 80s, but rarely do we get to the 90s. And this will be our third week, I think, hitting up into the 90s. So yes, we're, um, we're in high heat because everything around here doesn't know what to do with sun of that extensiveness. So everything's kind of crispy. So yeah. Alrighty, so what I was going to do this evening is I was going to talk a little bit um, about Canada and I wanted to do a giveaway next week um, from some of the goodies that I was collecting on my trip, hoping to give away something really special to someone here on chat next week. I was thinking Monday, but I may 
do it a week from today. I think that would be better. I do have a lot on my schedule, so I'm trying to make sure that like when I do this, I can give you guys my 110%, so I want to make sure that I can do that. So this weekend's going to be busy since I have uh, an art fair and I'm still working on my time difference problems because it was only three hours, but those three hours seem to have caught up with me in ways I didn't expect. So a week from today, I'm going to be doing a giveaway with my normal stream. So if you've been following me, you'll know what it's all about. You'll kind of know what you're, what you might get into because that's what I'm going to be working on because I wanted to make it a little special. I wanted to make some art that is special for this giveaway um, and um, just kind of make it fun and be able to talk about my experience that I had in Canada. So um, I pulled up two images that like really spoke to me. They're not the best images ever. <laughs> so for a warning, they were taken on my phone, so the image quality is not really good. But I just wanted to talk about two images before we got started today, just so you kind of understand where my inspiration for my art is going and what I was thinking about doing um, for some of the giveaway. So let me see if I can pull up my first one. It'll take me just a minute here in OBS. Okay, so let me switch this over. All right, so here is an image from my trip. Not the best image, not not what I would call high quality image quality. However, um, it was, it's really hard for me when I'm having a moment that I'm really immersed into it, it's hard for me to focus on taking a really great photo. It just doesn't really cross my mind because I'm really absorbed into what's happening. So um, we decided to rent bikes to bike around the city's largest park in Vancouver, which is called Stanley Park. And Stanley Park is huge. Like I think, I don't remember how many kilometers is around, but it is quite extensive. It takes, if you're hoofing it on a bike, it'll take you about an hour to go around the park. Um, and we spent three hours on a bike just biking around and through the park and it was fun so um so what we did is that we came around a corner and there was this pinnacle of rock sitting there and i had noticed it earlier because we had a slight mishap with one of our bikes where we accidentally um didn't switch gears while we were actively moving and if you do that on a bike you will unhook your gear chain <laughs> So we were repairing the chain back onto the bike when I noticed this rock just standing out on its own. The path is right next to it. And once we got our bike fixed and we started getting closer to it, there was a bald eagle. And you can barely see it in this photo, but there's a bald eagle sitting and flying around this tree on the top of this pinnacle of rock. And it was just so cool because it wasn't something I was expecting. I knew that... Um, like especially in British Columbia, they have bald eagles because it's a good fishing and they're scavengers. So they have really great fishing spots and they have a lot of places that they can steal. Because if you don't know that about bald eagles, they do steal food if they can because they're kind of lazy, but that's okay. They're big birds and they're pretty brave. So um, what caught my attention about the moment was that I thought the rock was a really cool shape. I love that there was just this lone scrubby tree sitting on top of it, just clinging on to life. And then you had this eagle just saying, hey, I'm here, what's up? And that was just really awesome. But um, when we got up to the rock, there was actually like a little plaque that was right next to it. I'm gonna see if I can find what it was saying. Um, let's see, let's see if I can find it really quick because apparently there was a story about the pinnacle. Um, it's, and I may say this wrong, so it's a story um, from one of the One Nations, which is the name that they refer to all the tribes that lived in Canada forever. They still live there, there's still many tribes there, um, and they're all native to Canada. And it's called a Swash Rock, I think is how you say it. And there's an Indian legend that tells us that this 50 foot high pinnacle of rock 
stands as an imperishable monument to the Skalash, the unselfish, who was turned into stone by Quasi, the Transformer, um, as a reward for his unselfishness. So I, li I liked that story so much. Like, to see an eagle flying around it and then to know that like there was a legend behind it where this very unselfish man as a reward for his unselfishness he got turned into a rock to oversee the land that he loved like that was really really cool and i thought that was really awesome so um that was something that was really important to me is because it felt very moving it felt very spiritual to me and it wasn't something I was expecting at all. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to share before I get to my art and get to showing you guys a couple things, other things. Um, let me see if I can switch it on over. All right, so in, um, not in Vancouver, but on Vancouver Island in Victoria, there is the National no, the Royal Museum, there we go, the Royal Museum of British Columbia. And they had a whole exhibit dedicated to One Nations and all the tribes that um, lived on Vancouver Island. And it was really cool because they had a video of this gentleman weaving and he was really amazing. It was really amazing to see, watch him weave on this video and be able to see some of his artwork because it really was. It was incredible and is incredible. And his name is, um, let me see if I can pull up a bigger photo for myself really quick. Uh, Willie, Willie White is his name and I cannot say his One Nation's name because I will butcher it <laughs> and I won't even try. But there was something that he said that was just like, Wow, it was really, really powerful to me. Um, he said, when we invite you in to watch our art, we're sharing a very deep part of our very being. It is about who we are as a people. So for him, making art was an expression of his culture, expression of who he was, an expression of his own spiritual being. And I was just like, wow, like, as an artist, like that spoke to me in a very strong way and it was really like incredible. Um, and I just really, really love that quote. So I thought that was pretty, it was, it was pretty amazing. So, but yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you guys because those were when I had some time to think about it. Um, the whole experience about going to a different country, even though they spoke English. Um, so I didn't have the experience of like going to a country that I don't know the language that well. But even that, like just, it was really touching to me to go to some place that is different from what I've ever experienced before. Um, it seems like everyone has a really strong sense of community there and a very strong sense of wanting to provide more for nature and a very acutely aware of how they're impacting nature so they're aware of the purchases they make um like i said i think last stream we were talking about how like we had to like pay for bags so like when we purchase something we would have to pay for the bags that it would come in because they didn't want to make excess waste so they were encouraging people to either bring their own reusable bags or just to like carry it with them. So it really like, really made you think because they are so close to the ocean and they actively get to see what happens to the oceans when we don't take care of our trash and we're not as responsible with our resources as we could be. So that was just like, wow. It was really cool to see like a whole community of people doing their very best, still living in a very modern world, still trying to, you know, make things affordable, but also being responsible towards the environment. So that just, just made me really happy. So yeah, and I agree, Mathers has said it was a very self-aware place and it, it did really add to the beauty. It was really, it was really cool. It was really cool. If you guys haven't been to Canada, I'd highly recommend it. It's 
at least the Vancouver eye area was fun. If you like big cities, it's great. Um, it's maybe a little too big for me. I'm a country kid. So um, Vancouver Island was gorgeous and the ferry ride was totally worth it. I would love to do another ferry ride very soon. So that was just fun. Um, and Victoria was stunning. It was such an ancient, it feels ancient, even though it's only was built in the 1800s, it still feels very, very old. Um, and yeah, I would highly recommend Victoria too. And Vancouver Island, I would love to go back very, very soon. Yeah, most of the trash is fishing equipment and plastic, yes. Yes, um, yeah, we went to the aquarium and um, it was really cool because I didn't realize it, but I knew that a lot of sea life was having problems with our plastic and everything, but especially for like sea turtles, um, a plastic bag that's somewhat in a knot really looks like a jellyfish. And so turtles will eat the plastic bags thinking that it's jellyfish. And then in turn, because of the plastic, um, plastic actually um, like cuts out sunlight, um, kills off native species, and then jellyfish can apparently, like the little jellyfish can attach to floating trash and it helps their population grow even more. So we're getting deserts in our oceans because of the amount of trash that we have in our oceans and the jellyfish are taking over, which it's not exactly a good thing because they're quite aggressive little species. So we will need to find a balance. There's gotta be a balance in there somewhere. We'll find it, we just need to try. And we are trying, we're just, it's a slow process. It builds on itself. Yeah, it is kind of sad, but I, I have faith in people and I have faith in people that we're going to make the right decisions in the future um, and it doesn't take much it's really very easy to do what you can so yeah okay now that I've gone off on my little environmentally aware self um, let me switch this over and let's let's do some art and let's talk about giveaways so let us transition over really quick okay so this is a sneak peek for my giveaway that I'm going to be doing next week. We're going to go ahead and do it on Wednesday so that way I can make it through my weekend and that way we can be excited about it um, and maybe do something fun. So I was collecting some things from Canada, um, collected some postcards, um, also made some purchases that help, um, speaking of being um, aware. Um, we did some donations and bought some purchases that actually help um, groups that are saving the ocean and promoting, um, what would you call it, wise consumer choices. So for example, um, OceanWise is uh, an organization that is encouraging like fishermen and lo especially local fisheries to have sustainable resources. So that way they're not depleting like salmon populations or other popular choices for fish and they're helping the ocean out. So when you do go to Canada, um, I would highly recommend if you can, if you look at any of their menus, some of their fish options will have this symbol right next to it. That means that you're buying a fish that was sustainably resourced, that they're giving back to the environment, they're making sure they're not overfishing um, and are aware of all of their practices and how they affect the environment. So this is a good way as a consumer, especially in Canada, because I don't think this is anywhere else that you can make sure that you are making the choice to support those who are supporting the environment, which is always a good thing. So, and also with our little sticker, we also, um, helped out with the Vancouver Aquarium with Marine, they have a Marine Rescue Program, which we went ahead and did that. Found a cute little bear pencil because it was adorable. And there's a couple of postcards here and um, also to go with the, um, with it as well, I'll be doing tiny little illustrations on this poo paper, which is awesome. It's made from uh, moose poop. 
I just love the idea. It's really, really fun. And I also found a really nice sketchbook at a local um, art supply store that's local to Canada. So I was supporting local economy when I do this. I always like to purchase um, any kind of sketchbook or any kind of like art materials from actual physical stores. So it's really important to me as an artist to keep supporting those storefronts. So if you do have a local art supply store, hold on to them dearly. They are disappearing. Michael's is not a local art store. What I mean is a mom and pop type um, art supplier or a direct supplier like here in the United States. I really like using um, Blick supplies because they are so supportive towards artists and helping promote them. So um, Opus is the art supply store that I found in Canada which they had some very, very nice supplies and super nice people. So, all right. <laughs> I know, poo poo paper cracks me up to no end. I just love, I love the idea that it's made from poop. Don't ask me why, it just cracks me up. Yes, I did find some interesting finds in Canada. I was really excited because I was looking. I had always had the a desire and want to um, do a giveaway um, of everything and so I made sure that I as we went through Canada I was picking up things that I thought would be fun um, I would be excited for if I received it in a giveaway so yeah I never, never give up on the chance to support local economies to support local aquariums, zoos. I know that they have like, zoos are hard, aquariums are also hard, but I truly believe that, that their foundations are to preserving the wildlife and preserving the species as wholes. Um, I know that for a lot of, um, for some species of animals, the zoos have been helping them keep them from going extinct. Um, or are holding on to the last few surviving members of their species. So I always try to go and see what they're about. And um, I'm really proud of those who are like very outspoken and very vocal about supporting some kind of animal rescue or animal funds to help keep wild spaces wild. All those things are really important. You get a summer job for school starts again. Oh my gosh. Good luck with a summer job. You might be able to find some jobs soon. Always at the end of the summer is usually a good transition. All right. So what I thought we would do is I would finish this painting that I've already started. I started a little bit earlier because I just wanted to see if I had the right colors. And I do. When we were walking through all the parks and all of the gardens and all the wild places, I would pick up leaves. So I would pick up different leaves of the ma maple family. So, um, so I wanted to do a painting. Let me see if I can pull over the other ones. I'm really surprised that they stayed green as long as they did. A lot of these leaves stayed very, very green. <laughs> um, some of these, I don't know what trees they're from. They were just, I love the shape of them. They were just really cool shapes. So I pressed them into my sketchbook and took them with me because they have so many trees in Canada. And um, I was really impressed by how ancient and old they were. They were huge. I am, I am a desert kid. And to see a tree that is just towering, I mean towering above you is just, uh, a very, it's just an experience all of in itself. Um, to think of a tree that's over a hundred years old and to touch a tree that's over a hundred years old is just like, wow, like you're, that's a living thing that's been living for more than a hundred years. It's just amazing to me. So I took these leaves and um, because I loved the trees there so much and the maple leaf is a symbol of Canada. Um, I think it's their, their national tree. Um, 
BC is not known for their maple trees or maple production. It's not what they're known for. That's more of Eastern Canada, but I wanted to represent some of the leaves that I found. So that's where this little illustration got started. So I'm just gonna set these over here really quick. So I need to put them back in my sketchbook. Speaking of leaves, gonna go water our trees. I know, our trees are a little heat stressed at the moment. So yeah, so I thought I would finish this little illustration. I knew I needed to get it started early. This is done on, I found this paper. It's new to me, it's called Fluid 100. It's hot press finish. Um, it's 100% cotton. It's the silkiest thing I've ever touched. I wish, I wish you guys could touch this paper. It's so nice. It is so smooth. Um, I have never heard of this brand before, but I'm always curious about new brands um, and I was trying new things. So this is hot press paper, which means it doesn't have any texture. It's very smooth and it's 140 pounds. So it's a nice heavy weight. Um, and it says that it's made in the U.S., which is interesting to me because um, I have never seen this brand before. But I'll be interested to see if I could find more of it later. So, yes, Mather's sister and I live together. Mather's sister is my husband. He's my hubby, my biggest supporter. So some of the colors that I've been using for this leaf um, illustration, which I don't think I'm gonna add ink to, I think I'm just gonna leave it as watercolor because I really love the texture. I'm not sure if you can see it. I can raise it up a little bit and see if it'll focus a little bit. There's some really nice textures going on here with the water and just making the watercolor work with itself. There's some really nice green texture going on here so it feels very leaf-like. I really love the colors. Um, it's more vibrant in person if you can believe it so it's gonna be really nice once I once I get it all finished and have all the different colors. It's turning out to be more fall-like than I was expecting but I really like the contrast of these colors together. So the colors that I um, decided to go with is um, I'm using Scarlet I'm also using um, a raw, no, let's see, hold on, correction, let me see if I can find it really quick. I'm using a yellow ochre as well, and then I'm using my serpentine green, which is a very nice um, watercolor, an undersea green, to create all of these nice um, contrasting colors and different shades. So a lot of this that I've already been working on is using a wet on wet technique and some of this is using a wet on wet technique letting it dry completely and then doing the other side of the leaf. So it's making really it's making it fun. It kind of reminds me of a quilt pattern. So what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and puddle water <laughs> to do that basic wet on wet technique. And then I'll use a smaller brush to go ahead and um, add some color to it. My underdrawing, um, what I did is I used a green watercolor pencil because I was hoping that it would eventually fade. And some of it is fading and some of it's not, just depending on the transparency of the watercolor. But it's still, like, I still kind of like it though. I like being able to see leaves through leaves. Hey, 
Breezy. Oh yes, Breezy, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. So the what on what technique um I'm gonna be so that way you can watch me breezy. Um I'm gonna be using this little this little guy over here, this little leaf here. And so what you'll wanna do is you don't wanna put too much water on your paper. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. Just like anything in watercolor, you just gotta play. If you puddle too much water on your paper, um, your watercolor will become so diluted that it won't get the strength of color that you're looking for. So it won't be super vibrant, it'll be super washed out, unless that's the look you're going for. It just depends on what you're trying to paint. Um, so you want it to basically be enough that when you hold it up to the light, you can see your reflection and not enough that it's making the paper pucker because it's trying to absorb all of that liquid because there's just so much of it. And it just depends on um, what kind of paper you're using. I've noticed that for wet on wet techniques, if I'm using really cheap paper, which I do use, I use it often just because I just need to practice. Um, the cheaper the paper is, it doesn't want to really, it, you end up working a lot harder on a wet on wet techniques because of the quality of the paper, unfortunately. Like all art supplies are really, you get what you pay for. So, um, but the higher quality of paper that you use, wet on wet techniques work better because the quality, so like this is 100% cotton paper. So it's, its job is to help aid you in the process of what you're working on. I always encourage using cheaper paper at first to learn your techniques because by the time you get to a really nice paper, um, you suddenly go, oh gosh, this is so easy. And you, because you had to learn um, using a different type of paper, once you go to a really nice paper, you're like, yeah, this is real nice. It's very easy to do. Because I know that when I was starting out with watercolor, I primarily used, can I think it's Kansan. I think that's what it's called. It's the watercolor paper that seems to be always on sale at um, Hobby Lobby or Michael's because, you know, when you're poor and you're trying to learn art, you do all the cells that you can. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and so it really helped teach me how to relax with watercolor. It taught me how to not worry so much and just try to learn the techniques knowing that if the piece didn't work out it wasn't that big a deal it wasn't expensive paper i could just put it off to the side and that was that so oh you love aquariums too good surprise dad joke What's the best pan to make sushi? Japan. Oh, yuck, yuck. Man, I love dad jokes. Excuse me. So I put this watercolor down and it seems a little muddy, so, and that's okay, but I just kind of want to like, I'm going to start adding water to it 
and I am going to make a puddle, but I really want the water to push all the pigments around and push it towards the edge because watercolor will follow water. And since we've already put water down on the paper in the shape of the leaf, it's going to automatically go to the edges and stop, which is awesome. Unless I tilt the page and then it'll just do its own thing and run off the page, which can be a good thing as well. So then what I'll do is um, it's making all these, I really wish, wish you guys could see this a little bit better, but technology will get there. I will find better cameras eventually, but it'll start to push and swirl all these pigments around. And really um, that's where the fun part comes because then you're just playing and adding color to like the edges and to like the center. And I'm just using undiluted straight from the pan like colors. So I'm really leaning into that scarlet color um, because with all this water, it goes down really, really strong, but keep in mind that how much water you have on your, on your leaf, because as it dries, it'll, it'll naturally dilute it and it won't be as strong as you see it here. So like this color will eventually do this here, maybe not as much because it's a smaller space, but you can see that the color difference is changing. So I'm gonna add red and then I'm gonna go back into my yellow ochre, which is darker, and keep just adding. Yellow is, um, all yellows are transparent in nature, so it'll take a little bit more. And I can even use my brush to kind of guide some of that to where I want it to go and it'll kind of blend a little bit more. And that's why I'm washing my brushes really good in between is because I want to make sure that I have as much pigment on my brush more than water because I really want it to be super strong because I know I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to just add more water. So it's going to be a little puddly, but when it's all said and done, it'll start doing its own thing and it'll look really cool sitting in the background. Um, and. Uh, I'll do a high resolution scan of this because I'll probably make it available on my Redbubble store. But then um, when you see this um, as a scan and when I post it, um, you'll be able to see that texture. I really wish, wish you guys could touch the paper because um, the paper is so nice and it's nice to see all the watercolor, just the pigments making a, a beautiful, um, very texture, really, really nice texture. So, because leaves naturally, let me see if I can find one. Leaves naturally have a texture and have movement to it. So I'm just making a very artistic, um, very loose interpretation of that, just using what watercolors can naturally do, and then leaning that towards um, this subject matter, which is just, it's just fun for me. It's just, it's a fun process to do. Oh, I missed a dad joke. Oh my gosh, I missed a couple dad jokes. Hold on. You guys have been having fun. Okay, someone broke into my house last night and stole my limbo trophy. How can, how low can you go? Oh, ooh, that's wonderful. That is very funny. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Hello, Ginger. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying your D&D &D session. She also gave a dad joke. Did you hear about the submarine industry? It really took a dive. Oh my gosh, wow. That's hilarious. Right. Trying to think. I've got this beautiful red one here. I do another burnt one here so I can put 
doing color choices. Color choices are hard. I'm trying to think about the balance of colors. I'm going to have repeating colors. How many of those do I want to repeat? Um, how do I want to keep this one in front of everything else? Because it is so big and it's so bright. Hmm. I might make this one like this one, but maybe put more brown in it. Maybe make it more antique-y. Doing thinking out loud, thinking about what I want, what I want it to look like. That way you'll free me up to put another green one here, but I can do it this lighter green. And then we can put a yellow underneath to really push everything forward. Color theory at its best using lots of warm colors. <laughs> So with this wet on wet technique, I'm using a clean brush with clean water. This, this water is not dirty at all. It's just being tinted green because of the watercolor pencil, which does not bother me at all. I'm just adding just enough to puddle. I'm going to turn the page as I'm going to go around with water and I'm just going to make a very loose um, outline of water because it's really hard for me to see the water even though it's slightly tinted green. It's very hard for me to see the outline so I'm going to leave that very, I'm going to leave definitely some white so that way um, when I get excited and I start adding more water, um, what I can do is once it dries just a little bit. I can make a, like this edge here, I did all the water techniques and then once I was done messing with most of the colors, then I took my brush and I brushed it closer into this here. So that way I don't reactivate the colors in here. So I'm trying not to make it run and hopefully I won't have any bleeding over. But since these are all in the same type of family and I've got the colors everywhere, it's okay if it bleeds a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna to try to prevent that from happening. It's just a way to get around not using like masking fluid or anything else because I just don't, I just not patient. I don't wanna wait. <laughs> I don't wanna wait for masking fluid to dry. So. So I'm going to go into my undersea green, which is a pre-made green. Um, I usually try to stay away from already made greens because they're just not as vibrant as the greens you can make. Um, however, I'm looking for, because I'm looking for this texture, um, it would take me too long to make a puddle big enough of colors. So, and I want that mineral texture. I want the actual pigments and the minerals that was used in the pigments to show through. So that's why I'm using pre-made greens. Um, so that way they'll really interact with the water and the technique I'm using. And see, because I didn't, um, I didn't put water up here. So when it starts to interact with the water, you can see that the pigments want to go where the water is going. So it's actually moving away from this color here. So I'm not contaminating this cut, the red colors up here in this leaf, but I'm also still adding to what's happening here. I'm gonna try. Let me turn it this way, it might be better. Try not to stick my hand in the... Because 
watercolor loves to go wherever the water is. So because I'm doing a um, dry on wet technique here and it's going into a wet on wet technique, it's making these really nice, this really nice transition here. And it's just looking, just looking lovely actually. It's looking really nice. I'll add some water in here, just kind of break it up. Keep those edges going. Because I'm using a very tiny brush for, for a lot of space. do is I'll just add some water here and quick let me get my cup going a little closer I'm just gonna reactivate all those places we already have water on and we might be able to pull some of that watercolor down we don't want our edges to get too hard we want to have enough time to get all of the pigment down that we need to get I'm gonna go slightly quiet because I'm just gonna take some time to focus a little bit and get some more color down so that way I can start adding um, some more colors in here in just a second. I just want to make sure that we get these edges established first.
seeing if I missed anything. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let that sit for just a little bit. What did that go? I guess it makes sense that Europeans would introduce cats to control pests. I'm sure they controlled other local wildlife probably too well too. Aw, did Ada crawl on your lap? Oh, cute. Ada's been extremely lovey-dovey. Yeah, because she is not with me. I have a seven. Seven is asleep in his chair. He was there earlier today. Okay. So, to make really fun textures and everything, it takes a little bit of concentration, and it's hard for me to talk and like watch where the what the pigments are doing with the water and how it's interacting so I apologize for the little quietness but um, it's all to, to help with it but as it starts to dry it should look really So now the trick is, um, because I am doing such large areas with lots and lots of water, I gotta think about where I'm going next and um, keeping track of like what's drying, where it's drying, where is my hand placement going to be? Um, because, because these edges are so wet, I can't paint on this leaf um, because that won't work because this will run into this and I'll just become a mess. I could paint this leaf and stay far away from this whole edge of the paper. So I might flip it around and do this leaf here. Just gotta decide what color I want it to be. Probably have to be another repeat of this aged color here. But I might switch it up and use, um, what color is this? Um, Gambage. Gambage here, this nice um, sunnier yellow, I might use that instead of my ochre. And that will change up the color too and really push this green, this nice green color forward. So that way I can use the yellow right here and use this pretty green over here in this corner. don't mind but I was just feeling insane in the rain for this evening I was just feeling like I just needed some really nice smooth jazz <laughs> so that's why you haven't heard smooth the groove tonight and you're just hearing insane in the rain um, just because I felt like listening to more of just, just what I was listening to earlier and it was just like no I'll just just feature him they're both extremely talented artists and they're Hope you guys don't mind listening to video game music as I paint, but it's just what I listen to anyways, so. And I'm really lucky because these extremely talented artists are very friendly and they don't know me from Adam, but they said I could use their music on my stream, so I'm very grateful towards them. So um, if you like what you're hearing, be sure to support them. You can find their music on, I know you can find them on iTunes. I'm trying to remember the other website. It might run away from me until I may have to look it up. There's, I know that there's another website where you can find really good artists. Something camp. I can't remember. I don't know Math or Sist if you can, if you know what I'm talking about. But I know Smooth the Group has all of his music on there. I think that website gives uh, a larger cut to the artist, so that way they they can fund their music. Okay. All right. 
time. Oh, we're already at an hour. Band camp, thank you. I knew they had a camp in there. Seven is snoring up a storm over there. I have no idea if you guys could hear him, but he is just, he's having kitty rim sleep. He is out, out.
stayed. I'm very happy. Um, I need to let um, let my leaves set up just a little bit more because um, I now have two large areas that are predominantly wet. So this will be a great time for me to take a really quick break. I think we have been doing art for just a little over an hour now. So I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna let you guys go to break for a little bit. I will be back pr probably. I usually do average about eight minutes. I never seem to make it to 10. So at the latest, I'll see you in 10 minutes. At the shortest, I'll see you in eight minutes. So go ahead and grab your favorite drinks, your favorite beverages. Thank you for joining me and we'll come back and we'll finish a couple more leaves. And then um, we'll see where we at are on time wise. But yeah, thanks guys so much. And I'll see you in just, I know drinks sound really good. I really want a drink of water. I think I like got done with that leaf and I was like, man, I'm thirsty. So I, I need to take care of getting some water myself. So let's meet back here in just a little bit, in about eight minutes or so.
Hello, hello, I'm back. I didn't make it to 10 minutes, I know, seem to do. But I got water, I walked around, I pet a kitty, I'm recharged, it's good. It is all good. Things are drying slowly but surely. It's just exciting. I like it when things dry. Hello. Is it, I think it's Breck Chigel. I may be saying that wrong, but you used a Pokeball. ball. That was exciting. It's like a, oh fun. Everyone's using the Pokeball. Everyone just catch Pokemon. Everyone just go ahead and find your own Pokemon. I really want to find a Pokemon. Let's see if I can do it too. Hold on. Rex Tangle. Thank you, Mathersist. Sometimes the font's really small and my eyeballs just don't see it very well. That whole, you know, <laughs> the whole thing of my eyeballs working. It's just, it's just hard. It's hard sometimes. So I apologize, Rex Tangle, for getting, for getting it wrong. But thank you for catching a Pokemon. Let's see if I can catch one too. Hold on. Let me see if I can do the... I don't ever mean to butcher anyone's name, but I will get it wrong. And hopefully you will forgive me. Forgive me for doing that. Rectangle! Ah, uh, I see what you did there. That is really great. I love it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mm. You have my respect. That is a very clever name. It's very, very clever. Well, welcome, Rectangle. Welcome to this evening. We are painting leaves here. 
Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. Um, I am going to be giving away this little, little original next week, um, next Wednesday, with lots of other goodies as well. Because um, I went to Canada last week, but I wanted to have enough time to actually make some art that can go home with whoever wins the little goodie package. And this is what's going to go home with some lucky winner next Wednesday. So be sure, if you are interested, be sure to come back next Wednesday from 7.30 um, at Eastern Time. I almost forgot what time zone I was in. I'm in Eastern Time Zone. So yeah, so that's what we're working on is we're just playing, having fun, catching Pokeball. Hello, Lumos. Oh, Breezy the Wonderful. Well, welcome, Rectangle. I love your name. Your name is so cool. <laughs> and hello, Lumos. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm... I, uh... Since you just joined us, Lumos, and I, I know that you like this just as much as I do, um, and because I did go on a very short break, because I never seem to, I did spend some time when I was in Canada to collect leaves, which... Literally, you can see, you can literally place them on here and lift them up. That's really cool. Um, so I spent time to collect different types of leaves. So I have this little guy, which I may have stuck in my feet. No, oh, good. Okay. And there's this fun shape that I found. These are not all maple leaves, but some of them are in the maple family. Some of them are like... Um, different shapes. I have no idea what family this little guy is in, but he's fun. And then um, this little guy was really cool too. I love love this leaf shape. I have no idea. I need to... I'm not an arbor. I need to learn more about trees though. Because um, I was... I don't remember who I was talking to. You can tell I'm slightly sleep deprived still because I don't remember. However, we were talking to someone and they were talking about how trees will give nutrients to trees that are in trouble over, um, so they're able to, certain types of trees are able to do that, where if they have somebody close near them that is struggling and doing poorly, they'll actually divert nutrients over to them so that way they can help survive. Trees are fascinating. They're really amazing plants. So. I don't remember who I was talking to about that, but it was a really fun conversation. All right. Okay. Okay, I was going to do yellow here, and then I was going to do something fun like this over here. Yeah. Okay. Now that I remember where I'm going. Hello, Ada. Oh, my little kitty appears. Ada. Hey, sweetie. Looking down to pet a cat. She's like, I'm staying. Yeah, she's staying away from me. She's like, I don't want to be on camera tonight. Don't make me do it. <laughs> like, I won't force you, Ada. Girl, huh? What you doing? Oh man, got a tail hug from under the table. She's on patrol, I think, right now. She's looking for spiders. Which I probably do have spiders. I had my studio shut for the two weeks we were gone because I don't really trust my kitties. I love my kitties, they're really good kitties, but I don't trust them with my art supplies. I think before we left, we, she was so proud of herself, and I don't even know how she did this. 
And if I've already told this story, I'm so sorry. But I had a, um, a just like a sandwich bag sitting on my desk that had salt in it. And it was just rock salt so I could use it for my watercolors. And I didn't think anything of it, but the last time that I used it, I didn't close the bag and kind of forgot about it. And I had my studio open and Ada decided to come in and she comes trotting into my studio. She's climbing all over everything because I wasn't there to tell her no. And uh, so then I'm upstairs cleaning and when I see Ada come up the stairs and she's super proud of herself. She's kind of trilling, she's making her little war cries and she's just talking up a storm about like, I got this thing and I'm so proud. And all I see is a sandwich bag in her mouth. And I'm like, where did you get this thing? Cause I never leave that stuff out except in my art studio. And she had taken my little baggie of salt had tipped it on its end and made a trail of salt from my studio all the way out the door, all the way up the stairs, because I work in the basement. And I was just like, didn't know I was gonna vacuum those floors today, but I guess I get to vacuum those too. But she was just so happy and proud of herself. She thought she did this wonderful thing and brought me my little little sandwich bag. I was just like, oh, Ida, I love you. <laughs> but oh my gosh, this is a huge mess. So. I learned my lesson. Gotta close my door when I'm not in here with my kitty cats. <gasps> oh, that almost did. A dad joke. Okay. In the news of a courtroom, an artist was arrested today. I'm not surprised. He always seems sketchy. Yuck, yuck. I like that. That's really great. As artists, always sketching. <laughs> Time to consult the book, yes. Yes, math, just use all those. I think there's, I don't know, over 500 dad jokes. I love dad jokes. I love puns. I like the corny things in life. What do you call a number that can't keep still? A Roman numeral. Yell, yuck. Nah, so funny. That's definitely a math or sis joke. I know, Ada is my, she's my sweetie. She keeps us on our toes. Like I feel so bad for her because she's a She's a black kitty, so in the middle of the night, I will step on her, not intending to, but I literally cannot see her in the dark because she is just so dark. And she's got little white patches, but they're so little that you can't see them in the dark. The other two glow in the dark because they have big white patches, um, but Ada just kind of disappears. <laughs> I don't know if it's a black cat, Thing, but she's on she's got 
She definitely has a big personality and some, some special kitty-tude sometimes. But I think she's getting sweeter as she gets older. Cause she's We've had her now for over a year. We got her in um, the Indianapolis area does this big adoptathon every year where they invite local shelters from all over the state and neighboring states to come by with their um, overflow of rescue animals. So you can adopt animals there for a slightly cheaper price. Um, and we walked in there not intending to get a kitty, but we came out with a kitty. Um, it was love at first sight, and uh, she was asleep when I saw her at first, and we picked her up, and she started purring, and she farted, and that was that. She just she just had to come home with me. Not because she was farting, but it was just funny. It really cracked us up that she was just purring away this little, like, itty bitty, tiny, tiny thing was just purring away and she was just farting constantly. So we, we got the farting under control. <laughs> like a lot of rescue animals, she was a farm and livestock as my mom and I call it. She, she had some, some parasites and they were making her little intestines gassy. But we got all those resolved because it's just a, a rescue thing. I don't think I've ever had a rescue that didn't farm livestock of some sort or another. But they get over it really quickly. It's not too bad. They gotta go to the vet anyways, so. That made a really fun mixture of colors there. I like that. I think, I think I can paint this. I'll just have to be careful of the yellow. So while I'm thinking about it, I will be streaming tomorrow night because um, normally I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This week will be a little adjusted because I do have an art fair this weekend and I need to get ready for that on Friday. Um, so the my setup time that for that art show, um, art fair, excuse me, it's not an art show, it's an art fair, it's a local art fair. Um, is going to be in the evening so I was like all right I'll just um, go ahead and stream tomorrow evening instead so on tomorrow night I'm gonna grab my favorite dice and I'm gonna roll a d20 and I'm gonna choose a random monster to draw so if you like D&D or you're interested in monsters um, I don't know what monster I will be drawing it will be totally random and determined by the dice and uh, yeah, I will spend some time scheming up ways to see how I would want to use said monster, what kind of counter I think would be best for it, and we can chat about those kinds of things. Um, we'll learn about their, their stats, um, their challenge ratings, um, all that good jazz. So it should be fun. It should be, I always enjoy, enjoy doing that. I enjoyed the last one I did. It was a lot of fun. I liked, I liked the rolling of the dice because I don't get to play Dungeons and Dragons as much as I want to, but um, and I love being a DM, so it kind of like takes care of that desire to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and I think it would be fun. A very long-term goal for me. It won't happen anytime soon. But I would like to eventually create a book 
of illustrations of monsters from the monster manual because I admire the artists that are in the monster manual um, and the artists that work for Wizards of the Coast. There's some very talented artists there and um, I think it would be fun to, to have my own book of monsters. blended well and looks so natural. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lewis. I mean, um, I'm using what um, watercolor technique that's called wet on wet. So it means I put down as well, pretty much clean water down right where I want it to go. And then I add color to it. And I'm adding as much like straight from the pan directly to paper as much as I can so that way I have lots of the minerals that are in my pigments showing through and I'm basically using the water to help me play because it'll do fantastic like merging and like these fantastic textures and the drying so it comes it looks super saturated now but as it dries because it has so much water it makes it turns it opaque and does these really cool like um, like pushing and bubbling and edges that if I tried to control that, it would never ever work and I would be super frustrated, but since I'm just playing, it works beautifully. So. I'm sure there are some extremely talented artists that have figured out how to control this to make it do exactly what they want it to do, but I like playing so much that I'd rather just rather just play. Play with it until I think it looks right. And then just I like letting the watercolor work for me and create all the textures for me so I don't have to do it. <laughs> I spent so much in my college learning, learning a lot, and I loved my experience in college, but I didn't learn in college how to relax and how to just really enjoy the process and play, especially with watercolor. If you told me in college that I would get out of college, <coughs> excuse me, and watercolor would be my thing, I would have looked at you and thought you were crazy because man my watercolor classes always intimidated me so much and I was always terrified I could never quite get it to do what I wanted it to do and it was because I wasn't relaxed I wasn't enjoying myself or enjoying the process so when I got out of college and I didn't have a grade I had to worry about or you know the dreaded critique or anything like that. It suddenly became fun and I really, really do enjoy it. I think Bob Ross had a similar experience with his watercolors. He said that he spent years trying to like perfect making trees and doing every single little tiny leaf on the trees. And then he figured out how to make his brush and his oil paints do it for him. And he was like, I never turned back. He's like, I wasted so much time trying to be perfect when I could have been expressing myself.
What was my favorite medium in college? I absolutely fell in love and adored um, oil painting. Um, I took a lot of classes in oil painting and human figure. Human figure and oil painting were my favorite. I learned so much from those classes. I think, um, I think the reason why I love those classes so much is that my teachers were amazing. They were incredible artists themselves. But um, unlike my previous courses, which were a lot more structured and really like honing our techniques and making sure we use our sketchbook, which never seemed to stick in college. I had to get out of college before that stuck. Um, when I got into oil painting, I remember being extremely terrified. I remember the first oil painting I ever did it was not great, but like I was learning the process. But the crazy thing was, is that like my professor knew that not only myself, but pretty much my entire class had never touched oil painting, had never tried it before. But they were like, here's your assignment. Here's what you're supposed to do. Now go and do no instruction at all and so I think that's why I fell in love with oil painting so much because unlike in my um, watercolor classes which were a little more structured and like told you what to do um, my professor was like nope I'm stepping away if you've got questions I'm here but she was like no I just trust you guys to figure it out and I think that was making mistakes over and over again and then figuring out how to fix those mistakes and having like the time crunch of like this assignment's going to be due um, was just, I loved it. I ended up, it ended up terrifying me and then turning into something that I was like, oh man, I don't ever want to stop doing. I had to though. Um, the, to do um, oil paint, you need to use like turpentine and paint thinner and all of those chemicals are very toxic and you need good ventilation, which I've never had since I got out of college. So that's why I stopped doing oil painting. It really made me sad. And I think that's why I ended up turning around and picking up watercolors, is because I was like, I can do this literally anywhere. I can literally take this anywhere I want to go. I just need the patience to learn how to do it. So I started doing it with cheap brushes and cheap paints and uh, yeah. And I love it. I'm not going back anytime soon. Um, got into ink about three years ago through Inktober. I adore ink. We'll never go back. I can't wait for Inktober. Oh my gosh, especially now since I'm streaming. It's gonna be so much fun. I might stream a lot <laughs> in October just because I'm I'm gonna need to do all those illustrations and so might as well have you guys along for the ride. So, but yeah, yeah, it'll be great, it'll be fun. Very close to the two hour mark. All right, all right. So I need to let this dry. Um, I might go back with my color. Here we go. Wait. Use my color pencil and darken some of this up. Again, I think this piece is complete. 
I wanted it to feel like almost like a forest floor, but also have like an abstracty feel to it as well. So really like it. I need to challenge myself with more landscape studies and that kind of stuff. So it's good practice for me. This was fun. Okay, so I know I love the colors too. I think. I really wish that you guys could see this in person because um, it's not translating some of the red as much as I want it to but I'm gonna do a scan of this I am going to make this available on my Redbubble store um, because I think it's fun I think it's fantastic um, and uh, and I'll be giving it away so somebody will end up taking this home with them and they can hang it up and hopefully it'll make them happy all right, so before I go, I definitely wanted to do an experiment with our poo poo paper. I wanna see what this does with watercolor. I wanna see how it reacts. So you guys are gonna be with me to witness this. So I just need to move my leaves off to the side to let them dry. Take those away, set those down here in there. So this paper, if my camera will focus, my camera's having a hard time, um, is very flexible and it has a very textured side on one side. It's like a, it's a weave. And then the other side is pretty smooth, um, but it is pretty thin. I don't think I can put tape on it um, because as you can see, um, one of the corners is slightly uh, wrinkled. But since I was going to be doing an experiment, I wasn't really worried about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's see what it does when I put watercolor on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find... I think this guy might be... I'm just, I'm just going to be... We're going to go to kindergarten really quick. I'm just going to very lightly... Outline and trace. Just want to see what this does. I'm just gonna go back to kindergarten. We're just gonna trace this real quick. So since the paper is textured on the back, it's not a very smooth drawing surface. And the little bits of um, fiber, let me see what it says that it's in it blended with pine needles and non tree waste fibers such as corn husk and hay. So there's like um, some fibers in here too. So that doesn't make it a very smooth drawing surface, but it makes it a fun, fun paper. I mean, how many people can say they drawled on poo poo paper? Don't think very many people can say that, but we're gonna do it here. Okay, Let's see if I can put watercolor on this. Yeah. I'm super excited too. I was like, I'm almost to my two hour mark, but I want to try it. I want to see what this does. I want to see what the paper does. It might be really porous. It might leak through, but we'll see. We'll 
we'll see how it goes. It might be real fun. I might make a lot of tiny, tiny drawings on poo paper. It might be super absorbent, like Charmin paper. Because it is a coarse surface and because probably because of all the fibers that are in the um, in the paper it is it really wants to absorb it oh my gosh look we're running away our colors running away okay so as you add water it will seep into surrounding fibers um, and it is kind of running away from us so we can't use too much water so this will be more like doing a painting on um, rice paper, which is a traditional Chinese paper to use. The paper's super thin. You can't use hardly any water. It's gotta be like the perfect mixture of like water versus not. So I kind of already ran away a little bit. I used too much water here, but we learned something. So that's important. That's just fine. If we're learning, we can get around this. It won't be too bad. might also try um, it might be a good paper to try crayons on and then try to melt some like wax or something on but we'll see be interesting to see if this paper if it'll keep spreading or if it'll stop because if it decides to just stop like in an area around I can work with that because then I can come back in with like a watercolor pencil and like sharpen up the lines um, so yeah we'll see so it is spreading out we'll just see how far it spreads out really loves that water though and it's not really it's not really bubbling hardly at all it's just absorbing that water it'll be interesting to see how far the pigment spreads um because it might make a really cool like um basically it'll leak outside the lines we're calling out the lines um, but if it doesn't spread into like a hot mess in every direction, what we could do is use those watercolor pencils to layer it back on and then really build up some layers that way. Might be just, Let's see if I can find. Should you wake up, Sesev? Take a boy salmon. Probably gonna go get a bite to eat, huh? It's like, yeah, I'll be right back. See what happens when we add water we can add without it just going completely bananas. It is spreading though. It looks like it's not spreading too terribly far. Mm, experiment.
it is fascinating. It's a big experiment. It's an experiment to figure out how to use the paper. Figuring out what the paper will let you do versus what it won't do. Because this is paper that was not... I'm not sure what this paper was designed for. Other than just being fun and fascinating. Um, and a great alternative to regular paper for like stationery. Oh wow, see how it's spreading? Oh my gosh, it's having a field day over there. Okay, so what happens when we interrupt that? Another color, does it just spread faster? Hey, Sessa, do you wanna come up? Here, I'll scooch back. You wanna come up? Come on, buddy. Rrr. I don't know if you can see him yet. Scratch, scratch. Scratching to Kitty. Tico boy. Okay, seven is now. Oh, fascinating. It's interesting. It is fascinating. Oops, that's a big glove. Blurp. It's not about that much now. Also fascinating too is Seven just left. <laughs> Sounds like a title of a sophisticated research paper. Permeability of watercolor medium on an ultra low recycled paper. Yes. Well, the other fascinating thing too is that I chose to paint on the um, smooth side instead of this rough side here. So see what it's doing on the back and showing through. Um, but you can see the texture on this side so it makes it makes me wonder what would happen if you painted on the textured side let it dry and what would it look on the other side so could you do the painting in reverse so paint on this side and then um, and then basically add your details on the other side it's very curious I'm gonna probably experiment a lot more I wonder, wonder what we can do, maybe another green. Also because the paper is tinted this color, it changes the color of my watercolor just a little bit, not much, um, but it changes the, how the colors look because the colors look muted and not nearly as saturated as on like really bright white paper. So it is, it is fascinating. Seems to work best if you work from the center outwards and you kind of give it time to do its thing. excited it gets when you add just straight up water. You got real excited. I was like, I like that. Hmm, fascinating. So if I add, what happens when I add? Ooh, got very excited. Okay. So the paper doesn't want to hold on to its own water. It wants to spread the water everywhere. It just wants to equally distribute the water throughout the paper. So I added fresh water here, and then because I did that, it really exploded over here until it ran out of enough juice to really spread out any further. So that's a good thing to note. It's 
It's almost like you're doing a, a dry on dry technique, like you're just brushing it down, kind of using a tiny bit of water to help move it. This would be a fun, fun paper to work with like sponges or something like that. Be also like a great paper to use um, kid friendly watercolors. So like the ones that come super concentrated. Um, and especially with like really younger kids, it would be really fun to use like an eyedropper and have them drop different colors and see how quickly the paper absorbs it. Because then you can talk about like recycling and what is the paper made of? Can they feel the texture? Because it is a really good texture. Um, and then they can see what the watercolor does. Um, Cause they, I don't, I like it when it's like, I like the kids watercolor when it's straight out of the tube and it's not, cause they say to dilute it, but when it comes straight out of the bottle, it's like really cool um, colors. And it's fun to use eyedroppers, especially with younger kids, like five and younger, cause it's a good hand-eye coordination skill. It's good for them. Let's see if I can find some green green. Apparently I'm in a very fall mood. I just want to do just fall leaves today. can't make extremely detailed paintings on this paper, but if you're willing to just let it get wild and do its own thing, oh my gosh, this paper's fun. So you really have to just leave it be and just let it do its thing. Like that. 
I like that it does that. I actually love the way the watercolors bleed on the paper. I know, they bleed pretty. And Pendra and I agree. It does, like when you use magic markers and color a paper towel and then drop water onto it. Yeah, it's fun. It's about the same amount of control. <laughs> Not a whole lot of control. But if you just leave it be and let it do its thing, it's fun. Uses more watercolor, so if you needed to be conservative on watercolor, this might be a good experiment for cheaper watercolors. Which I do have some cheaper watercolors that I probably will try this again with because then I can just really get after it. Let's see where I put my pen in. Yeah, it's crazy and it's fun. Like, look what it's doing on the opposite side. Like, this is the textured side, so it's almost like a, it's like a reversible one. I actually kind of think that this side's prettier. <laughs> so I think you can paint in reverse with this paper. I think it's really cool. And the idea of making a drawing on poop paper just makes me super happy. Not sure I could sell this at an art fair, but if I could, I would totally try. <laughs> I don't know if there's much of a market for this kind of thing, but I think it's fun. I like the humor that goes with it. Like a two-sided leaf, just like a true leaf. Yeah, yeah, leaves have two sides. Yeah, it's very true, Lomas, that's really cool. Yeah, I think, I was thinking to myself, like this would be really cool to put between two pieces of glass and let it turn. Um, I'm not sure what it looks like. Oh, it's very pretty. Wish I could show you that. 
But if you hold it up to a light, it is, the paper is so thin, it's translucent, and it actually looks really cool. Reminds me of, um, I don't even know how we did it. It was in kindergarten or first grade. I don't know, my memory is really bad. I have a really bad memory. But we did, one year, um, we took leaves that we found in the schoolyard, and um, we ended up melting, somehow melting crayons on top of them and made like these beautiful like really pretty leaves I wish I could remember how the technique went because the leaves are really cool and it turned out really really good but yeah it reminds me of that that the same kind of like not the same technique of course but like the idea of experimentation you've never done it before you don't know what's gonna happen but it's like really really fun and um, you end up turning with this really cool, unique product. I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. I think I'll have to find a, a pretty way to display it. I don't know. I'll have to see. I'll have to do more of these. So they might make like really cool like um, silhouette drawings on this since it would end up being two-sided. Also I'd like to try ink like um, on it as well. I'm wondering how if ink would be too wet and it would just go crazy but I would like to try ink on this paper too. That's really cool. It'll be interesting to see um, what it does as it dries. It is really hard to pick up though. Um, so far there is no no bubbling at all. Um, it's two-sided. The texture side will show through on the smooth side so it creates a really nice texture. Um, it does, does absorb a lot of the color as it starts to dry so you do have to probably use um, a lot of watercolor to make it do its thing but my surface is dry so it's absorbing the color without unlike a paper towel which just leaks it everywhere and it no longer stays on it um, my surface area is completely dry so all of the watercolor is in the paper which is also really cool so yeah I'll have to just let it dry and see what it does once it's dry if it'll bubble or warp or if it'll just stay the way it is and it'll just kind of be like fabric in a way where it just takes the color and and that's that but that was a fun experiment thank you guys for letting me just try something i've never used poo paper before but that was a fun experiment and i'm interested to see um how it dries i can tell already that the saturation of color is really going down but that's okay it could just I think it's really cool that it's not leaking onto my surface at all. Um, it's actually staying within the paper. So yeah, and the watercolor pencil worked really well on it because I didn't use a sharpened one. I used a one with a rounded edge because I didn't want to affect the paper. And you can still see the natural fibers in the paper too. So the watercolor didn't... Um, take that away either. So all that natural pine needles are still in there and the corn husks and stuff like that. So yeah, that was really cool. Well guys, I am just about 20 minutes over, but that's okay. We had fun today. We, um, let me pull up the painting that we did earlier. Did you guys see where the drying process is going. There we go. So we've got, we just did a bunch of leaves today. Just, just never really left the maple leaves. Um, just having so much fun with the leaves and everything like that. So, um, like I said, I'm going to be doing a giveaway a week from today. 
I'm gonna let everything dry. Um, this is gonna be part of the giveaway. I'll even include this itty bitty tiny sketch in the sketchbook as well. So um, if you like it, you can give it a nice home. And yeah, I hope you guys um, enjoyed it. I'll be streaming tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be rolling a d20. Um, we're gonna be drawing a random monster from my monster list. I still have 19 monsters from that list from which we can choose from. And yeah, it's gonna be exciting. So I cannot tell you how excited I am to, to get to do this and get to try out the poo paper, which is really cool. I did a, a painting on poo paper. Just can't stop saying the word poo. It's just so much fun. <laughs> I am like a five-year-old, but it was it was a blast. It was so much fun to do. So thank you guys for just swinging with me, hanging out with me. Thank you for chatting. Thank you for lurking. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. So peace and blessings to you all, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you very very soon. And until then, have a great night.